Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudo Bullo playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15W47C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition. And this is the sixth in a sequence of videos in which I talk about item elevator design. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over the options for the levitator block of an item elevator uh, and um, as well as what their pros and cons are. Uh, so uh, just a quick recap. The uh, levitator block, uh, represented by this black block here, uh, works in conjunction with the barricade block, uh, represented by the red block here. Uh, and the levitator block is responsible for, pre uh, for propelling items up the tower after the tower has been sealed by the barricade block. Uh, so uh, there are really three categories of levitators. Um, uh, uh, there's uh, dropper launchers, piston launchers, and what I call switchable blocks. Uh, now, dropper la launchers don't actually fit uh, with the style of the item elevator I've been talking about, uh, but I've included them here as a warning. Uh, don't use them. Uh, and the reason why not is because an upward-facing dropper, like this one here, uh, will eject an item with a small horizontal velocity, uh, and that will cause the item to spit out the side of the tower for all but the shortest towers. Um, uh, so, And all of the other options here are also going to require that items ha uh, inside the levitator block have no horizontal velocity, um, uh, that they've come to a complete stop effectively. Uh, but for droppers, the horizontal velocity is inherent and unavoidable. So uh, these are broken, don't use them. Uh, piston launchers instead uh, are pretty classic, uh, predating the fence post elevators. Um, uh, and uh, in this case here, the, uh, uh, the levitator block is going to be the full block that is pushed upward by the piston. Uh, just a piston underneath there. Uh, now, besides requiring at least another block of space uh, beneath the base of the water channel, uh, the main disadvantage of piston launchers uh, is that, uh, um, currently at least, the items will accelerate uh, through the tower, uh, and that means that they can eject with uh, ridiculous velocity at the top, uh, potentially even phasing through several, several layers of blocks. Uh, and that is going to require uh, a, an absence of blocks above the tower. It's going to have to be open to the sky, uh, or you're going to have to have a potentially large collection area. Uh, now, I've heard that this accelerating behavior is actually a bug, um, maybe related to issue 89030. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and it could be fixed before the official 1.9 release, um, but uh, I, I wouldn't bet on it. So uh, this is probably going to have to deal with behavior, that kind of behavior from this uh, classic sort of piston launcher. Uh, now, as an alternative, um, the item can be allowed to drop uh, onto the top of a cobblestone wall. Uh, right here in the, in the middle, there's a cobblestone wall. Uh, and the cobblestone wall then is pushed upward by a piston uh, just below a top half slab. Uh, and since the collision box of the cobblestone wall is one and a half blocks high, uh, the item actually gets pushed into the slab. Uh, so even there's a, though there's a full block of space, it, it appears, uh, the, the item will actually get pushed into the slab. Uh, and once it gets pushed into the slab, um, the item's going to rise up through the tower without that acceleration. Uh, my guess is that uh, this is happening because the, the item is far enough away from block 36 when the piston was extending, um, but uh, I, I don't know for sure. Uh, so a, a small advantage of this particular setup uh, is that it does require an additional block of space beneath the base of the water channel because you have to go, uh, the piston needs to be uh, one block further down. Uh, and you do have to be careful about how the cobblestone wall is, uh, is connected down here. Uh, but uh, it, it's probably a, a good trade-off because um, you get that nice slow uh, rise of the items through the tower without having to worry about the large collection area. Uh, all right, so um, the, uh, besides uh, dropper launchers and piston launchers, the third category uh, of levitators are switchable blocks. Uh, and there are two subcategories of switchable blocks, uh, redstone components and connectors, but uh, all of them uh, pretty much work on the same principle. Uh, now, the, uh, the levitator block, in the case of a switchable block, has more than one potential collision box, uh, and it can be forced to switch from one to the other. Uh, so let me open up here, uh, and uh, an item that uh, comes in uh, and is pushed into the levitator block 
uh, it can be pushed in at a point that will intersect another collision box of the levitator block. Uh, so if the item is right over there, when the levitator block is forced to switch to its other collision, uh, collision box, uh, the, uh, that other collision box then will intersect the item and the item then will rise through the levitator block. Um, that is, of course, assuming that the levitator block is completely surrounded by solid blocks. Uh, and this is going to work with uh, doors, uh, trap doors, uh, fence gates, and uh, even upside down pistons uh, or downward facing pistons. Uh, although each of these uh, is going to be need to be powered by a redstone signal, um, all of them can be powered from the side, um, except the uh, um, uh, or, uh, can, all of them. Sorry, can be uh, powered from the side or beneath, um, except the uh, downward facing piston, which does need to be powered from the side. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, so. Uh, couple of disadvantages here. Uh, first, with respect to the door, the trap door, and the fence gate, uh, they all make the same opening closing sound and and it's just noisy. Yeah, so yeah, it, <laughs> it causes a lot of noise. So um, using these for the levitator block um, uh, is pretty noisy, or at least it can be noisy. Um, and, and there's another disadvantage uh, to fence gates uh, that is shared by the uh, downward facing piston. Uh, and that is that the um, uh, the positioning of items in the levitator block is much more sensitive. So um, if the fence gate is oriented this way, the the item has to be aligned uh, in the middle of the block this way. And of course, you can uh, you can orient the, the fence gate the other way, but it still is going to have to be in the middle of the block somehow. Uh, for pistons, the the item is going to actually have to be exactly in the center, and and uh, that kind of item positioning is a lot more finicky. So um, that's a that's a weakness of of those two. Uh, all right, um, let's see. Uh, otherwise, um, all of these uh, are are actually relatively easy to coordinate with other mechanisms, uh, and so these these can be good choices, uh, especially the door and the trap door, if you're willing to live with the noise. Uh, now the other subcategory of switchable blocks is connectors, uh, and um, the collision box of this cobblestone wall uh, that you can see back there, uh, it is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it does not include the extension uh, that would connect it to this block here on the left. Uh, it does include the extension that connects it to the block in the back, uh, but not the one on the left. Uh, and uh, if an item then is pushed into the space of the missing extension, uh, the item is going to rise through the extension when this block here is pushed next to that cobblestone wall and the extension just sort of magically appears. Uh, and uh, um, this is actually going to be the same for a number of other different connectors. Uh, they work all, all pretty much in the same way. Iron bars, fences, and glass panes can also be used for this. Uh, cobblestone walls are a better choice uh, for this sort of levitator block though because their uh, collision box extends all the way into the corner, uh, whereas these options down here have a much smaller collision box. Uh, all right, the, uh, the last uh, connector is actually an upside down stairs. Uh, now, the collision box of the stairs in the middle uh, does not include uh, this bit in the back lower corner here. Uh, and uh, uh, that, if that bit was here, that would identify this uh, upside down stairs as a corner stairs. Uh, uh, so if an item is actually pushed into that little corner, uh, then, uh, when, uh, then it's going to rise up through the stairs when another rotated upside down stairs uh, is pushed into position uh, because that's going to cause the stairs in the middle to become a corner stairs. And uh, you can see it just like that. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell, but yeah, you can see that that uh, middle stairs become a corner stairs and that, that little lower uh, back corner got filled in and that's where the item would rise through the, through the stairs. Uh, and uh, now, this works very similarly to using an upside down stairs uh, as a barricade block um, because there actually is a gap here. Uh, but when the game checks to see whether the levitator block is completely surrounded by solid blocks, it will count this upside down stairs. So uh, items aren't going to uh, get spit out this little gap here. Uh, at some point, again, that might be fixed, uh, but probably not for the official 1.9 release. 
And that is all then for this video. Uh, if uh, uh, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the options uh, for the regulator. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments. And thanks for watching.